The 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup will see the best footballers on the planet do battle. Midfield General Lena Oberdorf is Germany's brightest young star, while South American giants Brazil are craving Women's World Cup glory. Immerse yourself in the biggest sporting event of the year with the contenders. Tickets are selling fast for the 2023 Women's World Cup. July and August's showpiece event in Australia and New Zealand is set to be the biggest ever, with fans from over 120 countries snapping up tickets in huge numbers. More than 1.1 million people attended matches at France 2019, and FIFA is aiming to sell 1.5 million tickets for the first 32-nation tournament in 2023. We've sold close to 650,000 tickets now, so the ticket sales are tracking really, really well. The rush for tickets has seen Australia's opening World Cup game on July 20 move to a larger stadium with nearly double the capacity. To meet the unprecedented demand for tickets, Australia will face Ireland at Sydney's Stadium Australia, the tournament's biggest venue, which can seat over 80,000 spectators. It's definitely been a huge team effort uh, to make this happen. We've worked very, very closely with our stakeholders, Football Australia, the New South Wales Government, uh, Stadium Australia and Sydney Football Stadium. There's a lot of due diligence and work and analysis that has had to go in to make sure that if we make this switch, it doesn't impact on the world-class product that is the FIFA Women's World Cup. It's set to smash the attendance record for a Matildas match, which currently stands at just over 36,000, in yet another sign of the growing popularity of women's football. It's absolutely incredible that the Republic of Ireland have qualified for a Women's World Cup for the first time ever. What a huge, huge moment for that country and for women's football. And we know that there is a huge expat community in Australia from Ireland, and they also have a huge travelling fan pack, um, which is all the more reason for us to consider uh, this move of the stadiums for their match, just to allow as many seats as possible for those fans to fill. Stadium Australia will also host the 2023 World Cup final on August 20, with a sellout crowd of over 80,000 expected to attend the historic occasion. Together with New Zealand football, with FIFA, with our great support from government, with our member federations such as Football New South Wales, we do truly believe that we will deliver the best Women's World Cup of all time. The excitement is palpable as the 2023 World Cup draws ever closer, the first to be held in the Southern Hemisphere. The moment we got the tick of approval for knowing that we had the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, it's just been an, an upward trajectory of excitement and it's something that is a once in a lifetime opportunity in Australia and New Zealand. It's going to be an incredible start for the FIFA Women's World Cup this year. We of course have the opening match and the opening ceremony in Auckland where the New Zealand football ferns will take on Norway and then a few hours later across the ditch we're going to have the Matildas playing against the Republic of Ireland. Two absolutely massive matches and we're expecting over 100,000 fans to fill those two stadiums and take in that momentous moment, which will be the opening day of the Women's World Cup. Up next, can Brazil add a first Women's World Cup to their slew of South American silverware?
it wouldn't be a World Cup without the samba flair of Brazil. The South American giants are the ultimate exponents of the beautiful game and are always appointment viewing at any World Cup. The closest Brazil have come to winning a Women's World Cup was in 2007, finishing runners-up after a 2-0 loss to Germany in the final. But even with no Women's World Cup trophy next to their name, Brazil is still the most successful female team in South America, having won eight of a possible nine Copa America titles. Their most recent triumph occurred in 2022, defeating Colombia 1-0 in the final to also clinch direct qualification for the 2023 World Cup. And one of the stars of the tournament was Dabinha, tying for second in the golden boot with five goals. Having relied on legendary trio Marta, Cristian and Formiga for so long, Brazil have needed a new leader to emerge. And in the prime of her career, with over 130 caps next to her name, Derbinha is now the nation's go-to girl. Pick it. Lacing this through, it's brilliant. Derbinha around Beto's. Derbinha! Is perfect. She bends that ball right into the path of Derbinha, and Derbinha does so well to stay composed there. Coach Pia Sundhager's preferred formation is generally 4-4-2, with Dabinha the creative linchpin of her Brazilian lineup. Dabinha and Marta are two of Brazil's all-time leading scorers. In the absence of the injured pair, Brazil pushed European champions England all the way in the inaugural women's finalissima in April. Over 83,000 fans attended Wembley Stadium to see the Lionesses win 4-2 on penalties after Brazil's injury time equaliser forced the match into a shootout. At this specific moment, it, it's, I think it's tough. It's hard. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is not the World Cup. This is a, a, a journey to the World Cup, and we are learning so many things from this game. The younger players experience uh, a great team, England, uh, probably one of the favorites uh, in the World Cup, uh, but also in front of a big crowd. A thigh problem kept Marta out of Brazil's finalissima loss to England. The veteran had only just returned from a serious knee injury that sidelined her for 11 months. The six-time FIFA Player of the Year has scored more international goals than any other Brazilian player and has her sights set on a sixth World Cup in 2023. One of the greatest female players of all time, Marta claimed the golden boot and golden ball at the 2007 World Cup and later became the first footballer of any gender to score at five World Cups. Marta scored her 17th World Cup goal at France 2019, making her the all-time leading scorer in tournament history for both men and women. Her record rivals Brazilian legends Ronaldo and the late great Pelé, but a glaring omission from her sparkling CV is a World Cup winner's medal. I've talked to Marta and it will be special for me because uh, she speaks Swedish and she knows the Swedish style, so she will probably, uh, you know, she knows the Swedish culture as well. And I will ask her uh, whether there are certain things I need to think about in order to be respectful. Uh, if you look at the World Cup and um, if you look at uh, some of the moves she's making, uh, she can bring out the best performance in her teammates. Uh, and she will be uh, very important. Sundhager brings a wealth of big tournament experience, having led the U.S. to two Olympic gold medals and a second-place finish at the 2011 World Cup. And the Swedish tactician promised change, but not a total overhaul, when she was appointed Brazil coach in July 2019. The Brazilian team needs a change. 
But I don't think it should be too big of a change because the, then we will lose the confidence. Uh, again, uh, Brazilian played well in the World Cup. S but it can't be too small of a change because you might as well get a Brazilian coach. I'm coming with different experience and to balance with that kind of uh, situation to make sure it's a change that makes the difference. I think that's the biggest challenge. Sundhaga will have her Brazil side ready for Group F matches against France, Jamaica and Panama. And the Selecao have a score to settle after they were eliminated by the French in the round of 16 at the 2019 World Cup. Uh, France is a very good team and they are ranked very high. So, uh, but I don't want to get carried away. Uh, I promise you this, we, we will be prepared, that's for sure. In a major win for Brazil's Women's World Cup participants, they will receive the same pay and prize money as their male counterparts following an historic announcement in September 2020. First of all, equal pay, uh, equal is important. And uh, one of the reasons I'm sitting here is people making this decision have thought about it. Otherwise, there will be somebody else. And in more positive news for women's football in Brazil, the South American nation will bid to host the 2027 Women's World Cup. The bid has the backing of the Brazilian government as they prepare to rival South Africa and a joint bid from Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands to stage the 2027 global showpiece. If the bid is successful, it will be the third FIFA World Cup staged in Brazil and the first Women's World Cup held in South America. The government, through the presidency, through the Ministry of Sport, through Foreign Affairs, will be at CBF service to do what is necessary for us to bring the 2027 Women's World Cup to Brazil. It will be an extraordinary and motivational event to build a political consciousness with the Brazilian people. FIFA will announce the winning bid for the 2027 Women's World Cup in May 2024. Coming up, midfield dynamo Lena Oberdorf has the football world at her feet. Lena Oberdorf has emerged as one of the brightest young stars in women's football after a breakout campaign at Euro 2022. A versatile, athletic and physically strong player, Oberdorf was pivotal to Germany's run to the final, displaying superb discipline and maturity. I don't think it gets any better. I think before the tournament, we all hoped that we would get to the final, and now it's against England. I think the whole stadium will be against us, so we will have to soak up that atmosphere and turn it into positive energy. And then we will try to get our intensity as high as we have done in the last few games and throw everything into it again. Despite losing to England in the decider at Wembley, her dynamic midfield performances across the campaign saw her stock skyrocket. Oberdorf was named the inaugural young player of the tournament at the Women's Euros and was also selected in the 2022 team of the tournament, one of five Germans chosen in the lineup. When you travel to a tournament, of course the target is to win it. I don't think everyone believed in us to do that before the Euros, but we've shown at the right time that we can do it. She then became the second youngest player to be selected in the FIFA Women's World XI, capping off a stellar year for the Wolfsburg midfielder. After winning a League Cup double with Wolfsburg in 2022, Oberdorf added an extra year to her contract with De Wolfenen, tying her to the club until the end of 2025. 
Oberdorf's winning mentality shines through in her never-say-die attitude on the pitch. We have a feeling that we can win every game if we all give 100%. Even when the game doesn't quite go our way, we still trust in the contribution that everyone brings onto the pitch. Still in her early 20s and mature way beyond her years, Oberdorf is one of the first names on the Germany team sheet. And as far as all-round midfielders go, she's up there with the very best in the women's game. While her defensive acumen is an undoubted strength, Oberdorf has shown she's just as good on the ball. The German also poses an aerial threat from set pieces, scoring via a header in a 3-0 win over Portugal in a 2023 World Cup qualifier. Oberdorf was destined for big things ever since making her World Cup debut for Germany at just 17, the nation's youngest ever player to feature at the tournament. And after starring at Euro 2022, Oberdorf will look to shine once again at the 2023 Women's World Cup. China in 2007 was probably the best tournament. Um, it was the first time we got out of the group stage and it's a bit cheeky of me, but when I saw other teams leaving and we didn't have to leave, I felt like that was such a relief off my shoulders. Like, um, you know, I got a lot of playing time in that tournament and, you know, I got my 50th cap in that tournament. And then it, we, we were so close to home that we had a lot of fans and families that followed us over there. When we just broke down so many barriers to be there, we had no national league. You know, so many things that we had to, to get through in order to even make it that far, you know, was really great for our brand uh, and what we were trying to build at the time. And, and it was just lovely to see the support. I think, um, you know, Australians, we're, we're all about keeping together and... and as a, as a player myself, I was always trying to sit with different people at dinner, you know, get to know other people. And I mean, by the time you get to a tournament, you know people pretty well, but you don't always know the ins and outs of what's going on in their life. And, you know, it's just an opportunity to, to sit down and have a, have a proper conversation with people, especially the kids that might not um, get to open up much or there's always a newbie on tour that you, you might want to, you know, get to know and make them feel welcome. It's, it's really important that uh, the leadership group is, is out there, not, not creating cliques or uh, any sort of um, splits in the group. If you start to gravitate to the people that you enjoy spending time with only, uh, then other people seem, uh, you know, feel left out and you don't want that in a, in a team environment. Well, it's always breakfast early in the morning um, and that's usually a period where you get to grace w the buffet whenever you like um, because everybody sleeps differently. If it is a, a match day, you'll probably be locked in the hotel because, you know, people don't want to be going out. It's not locked as in um, on purpose, but uh, you feel like you shouldn't be doing too much. You, you might go for a walk as a team um, so a portion of that morning is, is taken up with team stuff where you're rolling, stretching, um, getting your mind prepped for the game and there might be some final meeting um, in there before you, you head to the game. The best roomies are the ones that are just ebb and flow. You just go with whatever each other needs um, and not, to, not get too critical of um, each other's habits. A lot of streaming, a lot of, uh, you know, series where, um, you know, you, you pick up different ideas or different preferences from people and card games, you know, lo lots of different board games. A lot of girls study and then just a lot of banter in between as well. Lots of fun and games. Still to come, Panama are in dreamland after clinching the final spot at the 2023 Women's World Cup.
Panama's dream of qualifying for a first Women's World Cup is now reality, securing the last spot for the 2023 finals. Las Canaleras booked their ticket to Australia and New Zealand by defeating Paraguay 1-0 in a tense intercontinental playoff in February. It was a lot of fun. I mean, Paraguay's a really good team, so just happy to get out on the other side and, and it with a good win and obviously punched our way to the World Cup. Lineth Sedeno was the hero for Panama, coming off the bench to net the decisive goal in the 75th minute. I'm lost for words. I'm so happy to make the country happy, and also all the players and coaches. Yes, it's really historic. It's the first time that Panama will go to the World Cup. I think that we deserve it. It was sweet redemption for Panama after falling agonizingly short of qualifying for the 2019 World Cup. They lost to Jamaica on penalties in the match for third place at the 2018 CONCACAF W Championship, which was effectively a World Cup playoff. I mean, it was amazing, like, to see the pride and joy in my teammates and just for me as well, it's just, it's an unbelievable feeling. And just to make it to the World Cup, you know, this has been a dream of all of ours since we were little. And to actually get it, it's just so surreal and I just, it's crazy. Captain Marta Cox holds the key for Panama with the midfielder scoring spectacularly in a 2-0 win over Papua New Guinea in their World Cup Intercontinental Playoff semi-final. And Panama can now look forward to World Cup matches against France, Brazil and CONCACAF rivals Jamaica in Group F. But there's one team in particular they are most looking forward to facing. Yes, it's Brazil, because it will be the first time that we will play against Brazil and in a World Cup. We are so happy and will try our best against them. Their meeting with the French on August 2 will be played at the redeveloped Sydney Football Stadium, one of six matches, including a round of 16 encounter, scheduled to be played at the venue. The Sydney Football Stadium was completely rebuilt in time for the 2023 World Cup and seats just over 42,000 patrons. Sydney FC, the A-League's most successful club with five championships and four Premier's plates, is one of the ground's major tenants. I have to say Sydney Football Stadium have been incredible throughout this process. Like us, they believe that this Women's World Cup can be the biggest and most successful ever. Uh, and they're putting a lot into this tournament with hosting six incredible matches. Panama are one of eight countries competing at their first Women's World Cup in 2023. And win, lose or draw, Panama's passionate fans will be behind the team every step of the way.